Greetings ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to a Venice game room. Right, today uh, we're going to be having a look at this. Now, this is uh, a C16. Um, I will actually get into talking about it in a little while um, when I actually pull the machine out. Um, what I'll do first is I'll show you a few of the connectors. You can see you've got uh, the joysticks, the reset, on, off, power switch which is on the side. Um, which are completely different to the Commodore 64, the not the same standard. As you can see on the back we've got uh, expansion port and RF and serial cassette, RGB, um, which we'll take a little look at in a minute. Then you've got your, your data cassette and drives and things, um, printers and whatnot. Now, as I said in my Formula 1 video, um, I didn't get one of these till fairly late on. It was about 91 and it was either, it was between 60 and 80 pound, I can't remember which, they were just trying to get rid of them. Um, in either Smiths or Woolworths, I, I really don't recall. Um, obviously it, it came with that. Um, an introduction to basic and obviously the cassette manual um, which again it looks like the C64 one apart from the fact it's black and it does have a different connector on it though um, to use these on the C64 you have to get a little adapter um, which I actually have but I didn't bring down with me so unfortunately you're not going to be able to see that now let's put those all out there um, I did get a joystick for this one as well and it's the standard joystick one that's very similar to the Atari one really nasty thing horrible to use um, that probably will get cleaned and then stored and never used again because I prefer my cruiser power player that's all I really use um, actually has that which is a converter to convert it to the C16's port which as I said is non-standard which means any joystick I can plug into it which is very handy um, but yeah, as I said this is it's very similar to the Atari joystick it's awful just like the Atari joysticks were and it will probably get tested cleaned and never used so we'll get that out of the way early on. Right. Um, obviously then we've got the data set. Which again, different to the C64 and the VIC. Another proprietary one. Um, it's actually in fairly good condition. Um, this was the one that Electron Ash got me. Um, I will give uh, another link to his channel in the description of this video. Um, bloody hell. Probably just broke it, but never mind. If that's the case, I'll do a repair video. <laughs> right. Um, as you can see, it's, it's working fine. It just needs a little bit of a clean. Not much. Um, the insides I've already cleaned. Um, it wasn't enough to warrant a restoration video to be honest because it only took me about five minutes and yeah it was fairly clean anyway I cleaned the heads a bit of uh, ISO and some cotton buds and there wasn't much dirt on it at all I was very surprised it uh, it was very clean um, but yeah I just need to strip it down and uh, give that a bit of a clean Let's get that one out of the way. Oh, then we have the adapter. 
which is probably a standard 9 volt adapter so the cables are all over the place there you are, it uses a DIN unlike the the C64 and the VIC, you can't use this on either of them either um, what we got on here, is it 9 volt? yeah 9.5 volts, 800 milliamps so it's very similar in voltage Wet. banging around everywhere now we get onto the actual machine itself right now I've already opened this up and I've cleaned the board with ISO it's all nice and clean um, same thing with this as well it's not really bad enough to warrant a restoration video but it still does need a bit of a clean um yeah i don't think enough of a uh, clean to want a restoration video because it's actually in fairly decent nick um one thing that is missing what is irking me a little bit is up there it's missing uh, the commodore label now if anybody knows if you can buy replicas of these um, anywhere please let me know in the comments um, I really don't it don't like it like that it's irking me quite badly because I like my machines to look as original as possible and without the Commodore 16 logo which is on the manual actually I think yeah it kind of looks like that and it says Commodore 16 yeah, I would be very appreciative if someone could drop a link in the comments to where I can get hold of something like that just to obviously make the machine as original as possible um, start by looking back even though I've showed it in the manual we've got the expansion port there which will be used for all sorts of things but what I have with this one is this if it does all now all you do is you slap the cartridge in like that, turn your machine on and straight away you've got the game come up um, I'm not sure how many cartridges they did do for the C16 to be honest because uh, when I had my original one I never had any uh, it's not actually a bad little game that one it isn't, it's like a jigsaw game it's, it's fairly basic um, and easy to beat but Ah, it's great for kids. Right, moving on. We've got uh, the RF, then we've got the RGB, we've got the serial, and then we've got the cassette. Now, on the side, which is going to be hard for me to actually see this, because I can't see over, but we've got the two joystick parts. Somewhere on there's a reset, there we go. There's a reset switch. Power switch and the power plug so it's uh, standard affair apart from obviously Commodore using different plugs to the VIC um, and the 64 now this came out in 1984 which was obviously two years after the Commodore 64 um, the main reason for actually releasing this was to try and, at least in the UK anyway, I'm not sure about America, but in the UK it was to try and enter the market where Sinclair was with his uh, Spectrum. Um, it's not overly powerful. Um, it has 16k RAM and 32k ROM. Uh, in that we have uh, basic 3.5 um, it is actually more advanced than the Commodore 64 Basic because you can directly access sound and bitmap graphics and things straight from Basic, which is very handy. The Basic itself is just generally a lot better than the C64 Basic. Um, it, it, where, it, where it differs is in the C64 you have what's called a SID chip and a VIC2 which controls your graphics and sound. Now in this one 
we don't have that we have a single chip called a TED now what that does is that does sound and graphics um, if I remember right the sound is two channel four octave for the white noise channel um, the graphics is 320 by 200 with I think it's 128 colors but the, the slight difference here is it has 16 colors and it has eight shades per color but all eight shades of black are black so in reality it only really has 121 colors even though it does actually have access to 128 which is a bit weird but yeah um, the graphic side of it um, it's better than the Vic chip in the Vic 20 but it's not as good as the Vic 2 in the Commodore 64 um, reason being it lacks any form of uh, sprite manipulation or sprite capabilities which are present in the Vic 2 um, I don't understand why Commodore actually did that because um, by then prices were coming down a bit that they probably could have made this a little bit sort of more towards being an upgrade for the C64 but they didn't um, this one does have a couple of big brothers uh, C116 and a plus 4 which I'm not really going to go into because we're talking about C16 at the moment but differ differences include more memory UC64K um, and yeah it, it, basically Commodore was seeing what Sinclair was doing and tried to sort of enter that little bit of the market because at the time the C64 was quite expensive and they wanted to get out a computer that could compete with a Speccy. Um, it never really sort of did very well I don't think but I always enjoyed it and I did like the games on it. Um, my brother's friend had one and played a lot of games on there. Um, yeah there's some enjoyable games I played. Um, yeah, and speaking of games, let's move on to the games. Right. Let's move that out the way. Now, with this one, I actually have some of the original games that came with it. Um, we've got the two introduction to basic tapes, tape one and tape two. And then we have Mayhem, Crazy Golf, and Exorcist. <laughs> Uh, other games that we usually bundled, we've got Climb It, Hop It, Munch It, and Shift It. Basically, Spade Invaders, Pac-Man, Frogger, and Donkey Kong. Um, most likely due to sort of licensing and things, uh, they decided to do that. Um, the other games got with it we have wolf pack which I believe label now because it was a clean this is what uh, mega bolts video minis some big mac mad maintenance man and formula one which you've probably already seen my, my video on that I already did previously um, yeah what I'm I'm looking for to be honest now is there's a few others I want I do plan on getting a SDTI you see so I can use that with my 64 and the C16 um, but there's still games I really do want on original which I'm gonna probably have a look on eBay for see if I can pick them up for a few quid um, things like Mr. Puniverse and uh, Treasure Island um, what else is there? Vegas Jackpot. There's, there's quite a few actually. Speed King. I want another copy of Speed King again. Um, like I said in my following on video, it's very similar to this, but I do prefer it because it's got a few more tracks. Um, that's, the, that's, that's the only difference, really. Um, but yeah, there's, there's one or two others I want to get that I really do want on original. There's a few Mastertronic titles that. Uh, I'm going to be looking out for to be honest. Um, let's get these all there. 
Right, I don't think I should show this little quick look at this before I end it. Uh, this, this is the manual for the cassette and in the pictures they seem to have a plus four um, which was kind of the big brother to this. Um, that had 64k and a built-in word processor and things. Um, I don't actually have a plus four, I'm thinking about getting one or actually making um, either an upgrade cartridge for this C16 or actually modern it and opening it up and uh, upgrading it to 64k but I'm not sure yet um, to be honest I'd prefer to keep it as original as possible so it's either going to be make myself an upgrade cartridge or get a plus 4 um, most likely a plus 4 I think at this point in time but yeah there's uh, not much in there to be honest really because they're fairly straightforward um, this one which is the introduction to basic is exactly what it says it's an introduction to basic and it does teach you well the basics uh, <laughs> I've not done much programming uh, on this to be honest it's uh, it's got 6502 in it I've programmed a machine code on the VIC-20 um, so it's it's not probably not going to be much different I've done a lot of coding on the C64 as well which is a 6510 which that chips almost identical I think except for the first two um, the first two bits which I think is cassette I.O. and um, bank switching as far as I recall but yeah it's a standard uh, this is how you learn basic <laughs> um, I might go through it actually even though I'm, I'm not a big fan of basic to be honest um, I like to be able to access the hardware directly but it might be a fun little uh, fun little project to go through I think yeah it covers graphics, music and all sorts of Ooh, it's got flowcharts and things and <laughs> You know, it, it basically is a standard affair. It's uh, it's nothing too advanced, but it's enough to get you started and enjoying yourself and learning more. And obviously, from there you can start messing around and learning things yourself. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually got a spec in here. Um, I might be wrong on some of the specifications I've gave out because it's all from memory so let's have a look um, I don't think it does actually uh, could be wrong it might be in the appendix somewhere uh, error messages do we have a specification uh, we have uh, syntax for commands. I'm guessing not. Um, if someone does know if the actual in here, because I don't want to go off bloody looking through it while doing the video. Um, like I said, uh, you let me know in the in the comments uh, if you can what page it's on. That'd be helpful. But I really don't think it has a specification in that manual. To be honest, um, unfortunately. This one I've got isn't boxed. Uh, I do have a carry case for it, which is fantastic. It's actually for the Commodore 64, but uh, obviously with small things being the same size, it fits really nice. Uh, where the adapter goes, obviously, is, is a bit small because the C16 adapter is half the size of the adapter for the C64. But yeah, very pleased with this. Um, so thanks again, Ash. I will leave a, a link. In the description to his channel, um, check it out. He's up, he's uploaded some new videos recently. He's working on uh, some HDMI stuff for the all the consoles. Very interesting stuff. So yeah, make sure you you have a look at that. Subscribe to his channel and uh, yeah, motivate him a bit. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Nice. So this is the Commodore C16. Uh, released by Commodore in 1984. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.